Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. The wine today is Garousse from Chateau d'Esclin, uh, Côte de Provence Rosé 2012. Uh, now this is uh, Chateau, uh, Chateau d'Esclin, I can't remember it precisely when their first vintage was, but uh, the idea of the, um, uh, of, of the property uh, was taken over by Sacha Lachine, uh, son of Alexis Lachine, uh, in the early, I think about 2004, something like that. I can't remember when their first vintage was, but his goal was to make the world's finest rosé. And uh, at the moment they make, uh, I think they make a red wine, a white wine, and four rosés, of which this is the top of the tree. And it um, comes with a price tag to match, but... Um, they don't make a whole lot of it, and if you're in, uh, if you're in, in Provence, uh, this is the wine that you ask for. In terms of the treatment that the wine's given, it's, it's almost treated more like a white burgundy. It's given barrel fermentation and uh, barrel maturity. So um, some of the rosés that they've got out, um, with, I'm, I'm, I'm tasting this in, in summer 2014. Uh, so they, they, they have got some 2013s uh, out, but uh, this has been, because of the extra time in barrel, it's released uh, a year after the others. And uh, so when I stick my nose in and smell it, it's not those, uh, it, it, sometimes a Côte, de, Côte de Provence and uh, other Provence roses can be uh, on that, they, they show a little bit of that, what I call the sandy character, the touch of red fruit in there. And uh, then there's this, yeah, slightly earthy, sandy character. Here, what I get is more those notes that I associate with uh, the élevage. So I'm getting creaminess, I'm getting a uh, subtle, um, Bits of peach, bits of citrus in there. It's one of those wines that, um, I, I mean, I've had a, a couple of vintages of this, and it's a wine that you almost like want to decant. I mean, you, I don't think too many people think about decanting rosés, but it really does take time to come out of its shell. So I'm going to do a little more swirling and um, uh, before I taste it. When you actually taste it, then you do get some of those, um, those what I call those sandy, earthy characters uh, flitting in and out. Um, although I have to say that if I were to taste it and uh, uh, be blindfolded, uh, that the, 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 those peach, slightly exotic, there's almost something like banana in there, a uh, bit of pineapple chunk, uh, but then there is this, um, uh, there's a freshness in there and it's not so much uh, citrus freshness. If it is citrus, it's very, really ripe oranges or something like that. Uh, a creaminess, a nuttiness. Um, but it does feel like there's a core of something that is still to uh, uh, still to come out of its shell. Um, one of those I'm I'm, I'm tasting uh, this this wine together with some people uh, in about two or three hours time. So I'll be very interested in a couple of things. First of all, uh, to see what's happened with um, it, it, with the way it's uh, it's expanded or grown uh, in the uh, with, with extra time open. Almost a rosé I want to decant. Uh, secondly, how it goes down, and um, this I, I'm tasting this in the north of England, and I know as soon as I uh, say that it's the world's most expensive rosé, because I think it is, uh, there'll be some people going, oh, it's not worth it, but uh, uh, then they saw, you see them driving around in their rather large cars and living in their rather large houses, so they have slight double standards. Don't tell them I said that. Um, but, I mean, for me, it's a fascinating wine, um, and... Um, Best rosé in the world? I don't know. Who, who else is in the competition? I can't think of anyone else who comes close, but um, pretty decent wine, and uh, so I've got a little bit less in my glass. I think I'll swallow this. See you soon.